Welcome everybody to this Care Collab video of Dendrobium Neifert's Alex Polly, together with Patricia's Orchids, whose link will be in the description below as soon as I see her video and update that link, which would currently be her channel link. This orchid and this Care Collab video, I have to say two thank yous. First of all, Patricia, thank you so much for approaching me. Thank you for recognizing that we have this orchid in common. And secondly, thank you, Patricia, for giving me her name. I bought this orchid as Dendrobium alexandrae crossed with Dendrobium polysema, totally unaware that it is called Neiferts alex poly. Neiferts being the name of the breeder who registered it in 2005. And I still don't know what the D stands for. So D dot Neiferts was the one that crossed the Alexandre with the Polysema to create this beauty. So what do I do in order to take care of this orchid? Well, first of all, let me get one thing really quickly out of the way. I have an issue with some of my dendrobiums. They seem to be a magnet for a pest that I have here locally, which is something of a moth larvae. And the moth larvae will plant the eggs to the underside of the leaves. And then when their little blighters hatch, they start to chew their way through the structure of the underside of the leaf. And most unfortunately, when it happens on new growths. So let me just put that out of the way with regards to what you're seeing here on a new growth that developed last year in 2020. The leaves haven't fully opened, and that is because when I went also to take care of the matter, the leaves were young, immature, but I could see that the pest was already trying to take hold. And I went with my insecticidal soap and started wiping the underside of the leaves in order to somehow combat the problem. I was only marginally successful, as you can tell, because the leaves never really opened. For future reference, if anybody finds similar issues, do this at night when the stomata is closed. I did my treatment during the day, and that is when the stomatas open. So the pest problem, plus me interfering with the respiratory function of this orchid, has caused these, this growth not to develop fully and open the leaves the way they should be, like this. So that is a note to self, and I just wanted to put that out there because the rest of my setup is my preferred method of just lacquer and self-watering, which works beautifully for this orchid. This orchid is extremely vigorous. It is thirsty, it is hungry. The self-watering setup is superb for how I can take care of it down here in Southern Spain. I have extremely, extremely low humidity. That means that if it was potted up with semi-hydro, I would have a really hard time staying on top of its needs with regards to water. For me, it grows all year round. Right now it is in bloom with two spikes. The third one has yet to open and they take forever. Let me tell you, these spikes take forever. Once you get to the bud stage, it's like, what are you doing? What are you waiting for? Yeah, they take a long time. Having said that though, the blooms last forever as well. So there's the upside to that. One thing is having to wait for them, but then they stick around for a very long time as well. The last time I had this one in bloom, it was like eight weeks, eight weeks at a minimum, but it grows all year round. So I have not stopped fertilizing this orchid. I do not give it a winter rest. I do not let the pot dry out. With self-watering and leka, there really is no wet dry cycle. There's a moment you can keep the orchid on a little bit of a drier side, depending how much you fill up the reservoir, but there's no real dryness in the pot. And as it's continuously growing, there is no reason to stop with the fertilizer because the next growth is already on the way, right here. And we are now end of January. So I'm expecting another growth out of this one, not just this one for 2021, 
It is now starting on its second direction of growth. Before I only had one, so I'm expecting another growth to come out. It's getting a full fertilizer regime every time that reservoir is empty, 300 parts per million, and regular flushing in between refilling that reservoir. I take the outer mask of the pot and flush through twice with plain RO water before I refill the reservoir with fertilized water. These orchids can tolerate quite the heat. And in my climate here, I have about eight to nine months of gorgeous warm climate that it can tolerate. In the summer, it can take the heat all the way up that my summer can throw at it. The only difference is it's not in direct sun ever. Very, very bright light in the mornings and late afternoon, I mean like late, late afternoon, the angle of the sun hits it with a bit of dappled, dappled light, but it won't, it won't be in direct sun throughout the entire summer. I'm very protective of the fact that uh, my winds are super, super dry and it can toast this orchid very, very quickly. Heat, yes, direct sun, no. And in the winter right now, I'm enjoying these blooms indoors in a dining room setup, which has been hijacked by my orchids. And it can go down to 14 degrees Celsius in my dining room, especially in this winter that we've just had. I normally average a 16 degrees Celsius minimum temperature. This winter was a little bit extraordinary and thus cooler, but it took it really, really well. I detect a very, very slight fragrance on this orchid, especially now that it's outside. I can somewhat feel that there is like a honey fragrance but it's not a sweet, pungent honey fragrance. It, it, it's there, there's a hint, but it's a, it's a deep, like a dark honey, something that, a little bit of a burnt, musty smell to it. It's not unpleasant, but once it's inside and only under artificial lights, there are no, there is no fragrance that I can detect at all. Now that it's outside, yes, there is something. The Alexandre is actually so close to the Spectabile, which is much more commonly known. One of the parents here, the Alexandre, the closest ally is the Dendrobium Spectabile. That is so clear and obvious. If you've ever seen a Spectabile, you would think there is absolutely no difference. However, it is said that the Alexandre is somewhat of a rarer species and only came into cultivation in around 1984. And that was when a plant actually bloomed and John Atwood was the one that identified it as an Alexandre as opposed to a Spectabile. And yes, this is a cross of Polysema, but the Spectabile is also a much, much bigger orchid. So the Alexandre turns out to be something that people still might consider a primary hybrid, a natural hybrid that can exist out in the wild and not in itself its own species. But there are still some discrepancies about that. That has not been confirmed or denied either way. But the thoughts are that the Alexandre in itself, it's possible it's not its own species. But for the time being, that's what we've got. That's what I can go by. Papua New Guinea is where the Alexandre comes from. And the Polysema comes from all the wonderful islands just south of Papua New Guinea, the Solomon Islands, Santa Cruz. There was also Vanatua and Bougainvillea Island, that one. The Polysema is somewhat more widespread on the island, whereas Papua New Guinea, that is where the Alexandre comes from. For the time being, I'm enjoying the blooms indoors. The temperatures outdoors are still far too cold for it. I'm getting night temperatures now of about eight degrees Celsius. That is a no-go. And the only reason it is now standing in direct sun is for purposes of filming. I'm just keeping an eye on the leaves, but they are cool, they're fine. As long as the leaves are cool, I'm okay with having her enjoy some direct sunshine. In general, I find this little primary hybrid to grow, well, not little, the medium size primary hybrid. <laughs> I find this one relatively easy to grow. I repotted it after having it for two years in uh, the summer of 2020. Even though it was in active growth, even though I didn't see any new roots growing, 
I went at those roots very, very radically. I cleaned up the root ball to about two thirds of what was in the pot and the orchid didn't miss a beat. She still bloomed for me. The roots are somewhat, not that delicate or sensitive, but it was a radical repot. I will leave uh, a card up about the repot of this one. But again, there was no, no problem with it adjusting back into its new pot whatsoever. I had no issues. Considering how drastically I went at the root ball, one would have thought, yeah, that's not going to happen. That's not going to work, especially during the time of year I was going at it. But within a couple of months, it was pot bound again. This, this orchid is super, super happy in its setup. The roots are not fussy. It will take well to a repot. I didn't wait for new roots. I just knew I had to get into that pot quickly in order not to have her in there another year and worry about having to repot her throughout the winter months where her growth is a little bit more slower because of the temperature difference. So the timing was not because of the roots. It was based on the fact it had to be done. And the more I had it in the warm part of the year, the better it was for it to get re-established in the pot. Never an issue. We never look back. This is how I care for my Nafert's Alex Polly. Would like to say thank you so very much to Patricia for sending me an email, for letting me know that we share this orchid. I am so happy to be able to have this one in bloom in order to do this care collab video. I look forward to seeing Patricia's video. Please be reminded that the link will be updated as and when I see the video. And, and, and if you happen to have this orchid and you want to join in on future updates, please feel free to get in touch with either Patricia or myself. My email is always in the description below and say, wow, I didn't know you had it as well. I've got it or anything like that, anywhere down the line. And future updates, hop on board. Let's increase on these Care Collab videos in subsequent updates. They are absolutely fantastic. There's so much going on in these blooms. It was a pleasure to do this video. Thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. Really appreciate your time. Have a wonderful day and stay safe. Take care. Bye.